Ever since I found the starter kit for MLB Showdown 2001, I've taken a headfirst dive back into this game. What started as a set of 30 cards turned into 201, and with those 201, a spreadsheet listing every statistic on each individual card. And that's not even counting the strategy cards. After hours of researching and building a probability calculator myself, my roster was complete, but then it came time to find an opponent. My hours and hours of research against her roster pieced together in no more than five minutes, and I lost eight to two. That's when I knew I was going to need some help. It sounds basic, but uh, home runs in contact, man. It does sound basic, but that strategy worked for Scott Forster, who hopped on a plane in 2001, headed for Seattle for the national tournament at the All-Star Game, and came back as the champion. I brought my team. I brought um, my deck. I brought two d20s one which was uh which i felt was lucky but i kind of felt was too lucky so i brought another one in case that one was suspiciously like 20 20 20. in the 2001 set there was one big leaguer that showdown players wanted or perhaps needed on their roster strike three swinging and this one's over complete dominance by the game's greatest pitcher pedro martinez if you had pedro he had to be your number one now, the game used real stats from the prior year, which is where Worth Wolpert comes in. The real thing that, that my job was was, like, putting the actual stats together. So um, I had a fancy Excel sheet, um, had a ton of formulas. It was I don't know. It was, it was huge. Uh, and it had – basically, I would grab the stats off of the Internet and then plug them in, and then a whole bunch of machinations would happen. And then it all the way on the far right, it would spit out the charts that you're used to seeing. And in 2001, Pedro was fresh off his second straight Cy Young Award. So all these games were Pedro v. Pedro. Uh, except for me, I went with uh, discount pitching and big bats. And my theory on that was, if I get control, I want the person to be out. So I just dug for pitchers that had 17 outs on their cards and no doubles. If MLB Showdown made a return, one card in particular would likely be all the rage. How would I even do it? Because the, the, the layouts were so different, right? Maybe you could put, actually what I would probably do is make the card super special uh, and put the hitting chart on the right side and the pitching chart on the left side or something like that. And that way you could just use either. It would be like a custom frame probably, but he's obviously, it, it, he's worth it. That wouldn't be the first time Wolpert made a custom card. Barry Bonds, starting in like 02 or 03, he just broke my model every time I put him in. He would literally cause an error in the in the sheet when I put it in there because it could not comprehend a card for him. So I had to do him by hand as well. To avoid a star-studded lineup from your leadoff hitter to the end of your bullpen, Wizards of the Coast implemented points or the cost of cards. In 2001, you had to keep your 20 players under 5,000 total points. That first submission that we sent to the PA, everyone was sort of out of 100. So the submission we sent to them, they sent back and said, this is not approved. No one can be one point. <laughs> so we were like, well, it's all kind of relative, so it doesn't really matter. So we literally just took the Excel sheet, wrote a function to multiply every single point value times 10, and then sent it right back with the exact same values, but except times 10. So everything's relatively still the same. But then they were like, okay, that's fine. Located just inches from your starting lineup is a deck that will change the outcome of the game, your strategy cards. I set up a lot of stuff um, based on getting rerolls on my own cards. To have success, those cards have to complement the players, so I had to boost my inventory. There was one or two cards, strategy cards, that were just completely busted. So my suggestion to you is ask Scott what those are and put a bunch of them in your deck. This matchup the middle was big, so... People who built their teams around middle infield did better on average just because they could shut down that card. And if the other person didn't, then that person was getting, you know, three or four extra hits a game. His strategy was put to the test early inside the convention center, facing off against the Kansas City regional winner in the first round of the 2001 National Championship. Sort of a rematch of the 1985 I-70 World Series. His pager was tired and he got me out on his card and I'm like, all right. It's, it's going to be third out. Let's go. And I throw down all these cards and re-roll on the pitcher's card. You know, he's got like 16 outs. And I'm like, yeah, that's a 25. I get a, a walk or a single or whatever. Not. <laughs> like, oh, that was dumb. I just blew my whole head on basically nothing. But Scott won anyways and went on to play Gary Quinn, the Chicago representative. He beat me. 
And when we were done, like we'd had such a good game, he just sh- we were shaking hands and he says, see you in the finals. And that he did. But this time, Scott turned the table and became the game's first national champion. I got two tickets to the All-Star game, which was pretty rad. That was uh, Cal Ripken's last All-Star game. So, And we were right down the third baseline. That was, uh, that was a fun time. And Cal certainly made it a memorable game. The man of a thousand stances leads off. Rips one. Goodbye. You can spend hours and hours putting together the best team and figuring out which strategy cards will make it into your deck, but the game requires a little luck too, and not just with the 20-sided die. Whenever you made a mistake, like if you were dealing, if you are like drawing cards or whatever and you accidentally drew an extra card, judge would come over and make a ruling. A lot of times that ruling was eject your most expensive player from the game. And my opponent in like the top eight, he's drawing cards like... Um, you know, top of the inning draw a card. He accidentally draws two cards, or he draws off a of my deck, or something crazy like that. And the uh, the judge comes over. And is like, all right, most expensive player out. Most expensive player is his first baseman. He doesn't have another first baseman. He has to put in somebody at first base who now has a takes that plus one defense rating to a minus one because anybody can fill in at a minus one. End of that game. Play at the plate for me to go ahead and move to the next round. He misses it by one. <laughs> Scott likes to hold on to his strategy cards until later in the game, amassing a handful of opportunities ready to strike when the time is right. And if your opponent's pitcher becomes tired, that could be the time. If the pitcher is throwing beyond their listed IP number, they become tired, losing one on every pitch. That is, of course, unless a strategy card is placed on him ahead of time. And according to the official score sheet, every third run against knocks off one inning that he can pitch without the disadvantage. It would just be like, well, he's mechanically still just as good as he was at the beginning of the game. So I really like that. Uh, man, he's struggling. Get him out of there. Let's bring in somebody new. Typically, you can throw in a couple of relievers and hope they close out the game. But one time, Scott forgot something pretty important. I forgot my strategy deck in my hotel room. Had to go get it. Because I was then late to the table, they ejected my highest point player, who was my starting pitcher. So I had to bring, pitch the entire first game with my bullpen um which was a stretch <laughs> that's the that was that was pitching tired by necessity wizards of the coast had built a successful game for fans of sports and strategy games but their last set was the 2005 print the game's still fun you know i think there's lots of people still making custom cards out there it, it's one of those games that's just uh you know it's got that right mix of fun and with the strategy deck strategies you don't just feel like you're just rolling dice and seeing what happens that it's uh, it really hits a sweet spot for me. But Wizards of the Coast is, at the end of the day, a business. The revenue never never really justified the the effort. I don't think. Wolpert says the game was ahead of its time, and if someone has the ability to make a mobile version of Showdown, it could take off. There's some magic sitting there for somebody to discover. Um, I hope someone does. I'll certainly be customer number one. With all this information, I made some roster moves following Scott's lead of big bats and discount pitching, and at the end of my overhaul, I had six points left. Now it's time for the rematch. The video you're watching now is 100 times its actual speed. This game took more than an hour to play. In the first three innings, we both put up zeros. But in the bottom of the fourth, I finally had a rally and put three on the board to take a 3-0 lead heading into the top of the fifth. But she answered with one run, so it's now 3-1 to one at the end of five. Doesn't score in the sixth. I do score in the sixth. So it's now 4-1. to one. Another scoreless inning in the seventh brings us to the top of the eighth where she notches two points. I respond, however, with one. And in the top of the ninth with a two-run lead, she scores twice, making it a tie game in the bottom of the ninth. Nothing clicking for us here, so we have to head to extra innings. In the 12th, she pushes one run across, heading into the bottom of the 12th. I luck out and score one to tie the game, and now there's one more shot with two outs to score the game-winning run. A double pushes Jim Edmonds across home plate, and we win the rematch on a walk-off double by Darren Erstad. Curveball, base hit! Even 20 years later, MLB Showdown is still a ton of fun, even if none of these players are still in the league anymore. And if Worth is customer number one for a mobile showdown game, 
you can consider me customer number two. I know this game is still alive and well, and who knows, maybe we will see it come back someday.